Today, I'm painting up the coolest, most badass bounty hunter in the entire Outer Rim, Cad Bane. Oh, and if you're wondering about that other bounty hunter, well, he's running a youth program on Tatooine now, so he doesn't really count. I've also been playing a ton of the Old Republic as a bounty hunter, so bounty hunters have been just on my mind, and I saw on my shelf sitting there calling to me Cad Bane, and I thought, you know what, I just painted up Darth Maul, one of my favorite characters from Star Wars. I actually really like Cad Bane, I think he's a very cool character. I love the whole history of why he has those tubes in his neck so they can avoid choke forcing and actually being able to still breathe. I just think that's so rad. So I thought today I'd go ahead and paint him up and show you how you can get some really effective uses out of your contrast paints to create some cool leather effects. Without further ado, we're gonna get the model primed up in grace here and get to painting. Since the release of Contrast 2.0, we've seen a much larger expansion of blues for me to play with, and so I did a little bit of testing before working on Cad Bane's flesh to see which would fit his flesh tone perfectly, because I specifically want to go with the Cad Bane from the Clone Wars. He is my favorite version of Cad Bane, and I really like the blue color tone they use on him. So I ultimately decided to go with a tried and true Talisar blue. I think this fits perfectly. We're gonna apply this to his face and his hands. Once I have this down and it's dried fully, I'm gonna go back in, clean up his eyes a little bit so that I can then apply some ball red. I wanted a bright, almost pinkish colored red for his eyes because I think the contrast against the blue that I've used is gonna be perfect. And I think ball red is absolutely the correct choice here. Once I'm done and satisfied with his face, I can move on to some of the more recessed details of his outfit, starting with that cowl that he has around his head, which I assume is for insulation of some type. I don't actually know, but what I do know is we're gonna be painting it up using some black Templar. After that has dried, we're going to move on to Wildwood, which is going to go on his inner shirt. I was a little concerned at first that the Wildwood color tone would be a little too dark and blend in too much with the Black Templar, but they stand out beautifully against each other, and I'm really liking the effects that I have with his more muted color tones against his bright, bold blue face. Now that we have these colors down, I was looking at that face and going, you know, I could push this a little bit more. So I decided to put a blue wash over him to settle into all those recesses and add a little bit more depth to all of the creases and his mouth so they stand out a bit more without having to do a lot of highlight because I already like the base color tone that I have. I think it matches him perfectly and the wash does exactly what I want it to. Now we can move on to those leathers. Let's move on to the leathers. I decided that I wanted to use Gargax Sewer as the color tone for his jacket, for his pants, for his gloves, as well as his hat, because I wanted something that was going to look like a hardened leather. This is meant to be something that he's wearing all the time, he's keeping it maintained, but it is going to have that wear and tear of leather that has maybe started to dry out a little bit. And I think the way that Gargax Sewer dries into the recesses and all of the folds and everything of all of the fabric that I put it on just does some beautiful stuff. I get some really gorgeous natural highlights, mid-tones and shadows. And I just, I use this color all the time now and there's the reason for it because I just think it works super well. After I am satisfied with how all of the leathers are looking for all the hard leathers, I wanna move on to somewhat the, the softer leathers. For this, I'm going with Fire Slayer Flesh, a brown color tone that I've not played around with for a while, but I really, really like it. I do go over all of the bags and anything that I want to be the softer leather color tone with two coatings of the Fire Slayer Flesh, just to help it blend in a little bit with the slightly darker browns that I've already put on him. But I really like how this sort of pops these details out, especially when it comes to his belt, the bag, and a little bit of detail on his gloves. Once we're done with the leathers, we can move on to all the metallics on the model. And for this, I'm just simply going to go with a bit of Basilicanum Gray. Now, if you look at any character models of Cad Bane online, you'll notice that those guns tend to have two different silver tones. And in order to accomplish that, I'm just going to layer up some Basilicanum over some areas and leave it in a single coating on others. This will give me a very natural two-tone for my silvers, and it works perfectly. After that, we just have some details to take care of and the base. 
Hey guys, I just wanted to jump in and let you know that I've recently started live streaming. So if you never want to miss those, or if you've been enjoying the content you're watching today, make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon for notifications. Now let's go ahead and jump back to the video. All right, we're down to just the details and there's really actually only two colors that we need to use here and one of them we've already used. We're returning to Black Templar because I was looking at the wrist brace that he has on his arms and there's a couple cables coming off of them and they seem to be always painted black, so that's what I'm going to do as well. While I was doing this inspection of the wrist braces, I decided that, or discovered rather, he had some buttons on there that were red and to make them stand out, I decided to also paint mine red. But instead of using ball red on like I did on the eyes, we're gonna go with Blood Angels red this time. I just wanted to do something that was a little bit different, make the other ones stand out more distinctly from each other. And I really like what this has done to the model. It adds just that extra punch of detail on top of all that really beautiful leather work that I've done. So now all we need to take care of is the base. For the base, I'm keeping it extremely simple. We are going with a texture paint. You can use whatever texture paint that you want, whatever fits with your army. I have been going with Armageddon dust, so that is what I'm going to spread all over Cad Bane's base, making sure to be extra careful around his feet so I don't get too much of this color tone on them because I do want them to still look fairly clean. I've been treating this dirt as very compact and hard and not creating a lot of dust and debris onto my models, and I want to maintain that throughout the rest of my models for Star Wars Legion. After that has had plenty of time to dry, I'm going to come back in with a brown wash. You can use something that's appropriate to your base color tone. I went with Sarah from Sepia and let that dry fully as well. Then the final step is to come in with a dry brush. And for this, I'm using Hobgrotz Flesh, or I, th I think that's the name of it. It's a light brown color tone. Again, you Hob can- Hobgrotz Hide. Hobgrotz Hide, that's what it is. Put that on as a dry brush. It brings this nice sort of earthy yellow color tone that I think brightens up the ground just enough to really make Cad Bane stand out beautifully against it. And after that, it's just a little bit of tufting and we can take a look at the final model. And here he is, my Cad Bane. And also Lego Cad Bane because I actually used him as reference as well while I was working on this model. Um, a little behind the scenes tip for you, or not even tip, it's really just a trick that I used. I use my Lego figure sometimes as reference. I really, really like how this particular model came out. I was exceptionally pleased with how the leathers turned out. That was something that I was really excited to work on with this particular model because Cad Bane's one of those characters where I think they did something very interesting with him. His flesh tone is a really bright, bold, beautiful color tone. Whereas his outfit is very almost drab and very neutral. And I like that contrast. And I think I nailed it on my model. And that was really what I was going for. I think you could do a couple of different things in regards to the leathers on Cad vein. For example, if you didn't want to go quite as dark as Gargax sewer, you could do snake bite leather instead for the bulk of his leathers and then pick some adjacent colors that help accent those. But I really like what I got out of it. And I think it matches what I've seen of the character models online, especially for the Clone Wars, which makes me especially happy. If you enjoyed watching this, do make sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss future painting tutorials or live streams or any of the other content that I'm making, including the hobby news, which will get a new one this Monday. Before I head out, I want to give a huge thank you to my patrons for making it so content like this can continue to happen. Your guys' support means the world to me, so thank you very, very much for being there and making it so we can keep doing this. I have been Angela, and I hope you have a wonderful hobby night.